Chapter six covers the idea of viewing work as a process and shows how breaking down the process into steps is fundamental to identifying and documenting standard work. The first video provides an overview of the concept of standard work as a documentation of the current best way and how and why standard work documents should be used. This includes the role of standard work in making sure that improvements are retained and practiced by existing employees and are also used to properly train new employees. Video also provides guidance on how to design standard work documents in a simple and clear manner. The second video goes into detail on how to define a process in terms of start, finish, output, actors, and process customers. This includes the idea of how process customers can be defined as being either external or internal and why this is important. An example of a purchasing process is presented. The final video provides instructions and a worksheet for the critical activity of actually breaking the process down into steps and providing supportive details. An example of filling out the process breakdown worksheet is presented. This worksheet is available as a PDF download. What it is, it's you're documenting, you're approving and training on the current best way of performing a process. Okay, so it, it is that there's an approval process to it. You can't have everybody just coming up with new ideas and jumping off with them. So there's an experimentation you'll see, um, but having approved, hey, this is a better way, we put it into standard work. I, the, the phrase current best way is important. I don't like the whole idea of best practice, right? We always want best practice for what we're doing. Yeah, we're doing the best practice because there really is no such thing. Okay, whatever you might think is best practice today is probably gonna be different tomorrow because new people are involved. There's new technology involved and so forth. So this is really just what is the current best way. Now standard work uh, has two different purposes. One is it's meant to ensure everybody who's doing that work is following this best currently known way. Okay, so there, that's the standardizing part. But it's not like a procedures manual where you kind of lock it down. It's meant to be a challenge to anyone who can come up with a better way. So even though it's there, this is the idea of where the, where the people doing the work are thinking as they're going along and looking at the standard work and saying, okay, that's how we do it now. How could, how could we do it better? So you know, standard work is often looked at in this sense as um, if you see the, the, the basic ball there, that's kind of the, um, the cycle of improvement. And as you, start, as you can move forward and kind of roll it up this incline of getting higher quality, the standard sort of becomes a wedge. It, it keeps you from regressing. Because as you've probably observed uh, in other situations, sometimes you make improvements, you come up with great ideas, and then people forget about it and it, it regresses back, right? So standard work is meant to kind of capture that, keep you from regressing, allows you to, to move forward and get even better, but doesn't let you fall backwards. In a practical sense, um, so standard work is basically out there to remind existing workers of how the work should be done, but it's also um, a way of training and onboarding new workers. So it serves kind of a dual purpose there. If you look at it in kind of the bigger picture of this uh, partnering approach, um, it provides a shared understanding between not just the people who are doing the work, but other people who don't do that work. So it improves communication and coordination. So it's, it's, um, so people in another group may look at this and go, wow, I, I didn't realize you guys did this. Well, let me see how that connects with what I do. So it, it's meant to serve that kind of purpose as well. Uh, to make it do that, you have to make sure it's relatively simple. And, you know, we're going to go through how to actually do this tonight. It should be simple, legible, easy to interpret. You know, try to keep a lot of the acronyms out if some other people in the company don't know those acronyms. It should be very visible and accessible to all employees, okay? So that's the idea of standard work. One important type of standard work is this process breakdown sheet, which we're gonna to get to uh, in a minute.
Before we do that, though, I want to step back and just talk a little bit about this idea of process. Because um, I say, you know, those who work in engineering systems, you know, process is a very familiar concept. But it's surprising a lot of people, we all have a general idea of what that means, but it has a very specific meaning. So process is basically a chunk of work that you repeat periodically. Think of it like a chunk of work because you can't look at everything you do in one chunk. So you kind of chunk, all right, I'm gonna look at this chunk. And it's an important way of thinking about everyday work as this chunk because this is proven to be the absolute best way of improving work. Um, a process is basically a set of related activities that are carried out by one or more process actors. So that's important to understand who is doing this work. A process has a start and an end and it produces some kind of output. So um, as you know, when I talked with each of you about your target processes, I would always say, what's the start, what's the end? You know, so that defines the scope. The output of the process is used by process customers. And this is important because a process customer can be either an external customer or an internal customer. Okay, this is the critical part of it. So external customer would be who you think of as a customer. So like in a, in, in a restaurant, you know, it's the patron who walks in the door. So if it's a meal service process, then the process customer is also the external paying customer. But how about a payroll process? Okay, if we're looking at that, what is the output of a payroll process? Well, it's paychecks, right? So who uses and gets the paychecks? The employees. So employees are the internal customer there, okay? So this is important for a couple of reasons. One is uh, you can look at any process using the same techniques, whether you're going to an external customer or to an internal customer. Um, it turns out the better you serve internal customers when they're all lined up, you're gonna serve your external customers better. If you do a better job of payroll, if you're not constantly having late paychecks, wrong paychecks, where you're you know, producing low morale, that's gonna hurt your, your external customer. If you do a great job of smoothly producing paychecks, you'll end up having you know, more motivated, less distracted people. But the other good thing about this is when you start treating other people within the company, other groups as internal customers, um, that goes a long way to starting to build more of this trust and respect that we're talking about that, that makes this partnering work better. So, uh, so that's the idea. Let's look at an example. So if we look at a purchasing process, um, here's a simple process where there's basically five activities, five steps. So you're re requesting a supply, Someone prepares and submits a purchase order. Not everybody does purchase order, but somehow you got to submit it. You accept a shipment coming in from the supplier, or you check the received supplies, make sure it's okay, and then you put them on the shelf. So that's a process. There's a start point, which is the decision to order some supplies. Somebody makes that decision. There's an end point. The supplies have been received and they're put on the shelf. All right, what's the output? Supplies available on the shelf. Now, the people who do this are the people that the process actors are the ones that do these different steps, who request the supplies, place the order, et cetera. Even the supplier is a process actor. So, uh, and it's those process actors who are gonna be critical to, uh, these are the ones doing the work that have to start thinking about how do I improve the work. The process customers are whoever uses those purchase supplies. So if it's, if it's a law firm and you're ordering, you know, uh, office supplies, it's whoever's going to need those office supplies. Uh, if it's a, a medical, dental, dental clinic, it's whoever's going to need those dental supplies. So there it's, it may be the external customer, but maybe not. You know, it could be typically an internal customer. Now let's look at it in a practical sense. Here is what you're going to be doing is taking your target process and breaking it out using this process breakdown worksheet, um, which is a format that's been used in, in a lot of other contexts. So here, um, the idea is to break the process down into steps, but no more than 15. This is, so this is not meant to be 
like an engineering level detailed procedural manual. It's meant to be a higher level, you know, something that can communicate, easy to understand, not if you're doing the work as well as somebody else who's not doing the work. So let's go ahead and look at an example, which I think will make it a little more clear. And so this is what you need to be doing with your target process coming up this week. This is a process support ticket handling, um, where actually this is one of our participants uh, is involved in this at, uh, at X Solutions, which is a managed service provider. So they're basically providing IT services to, um, to companies. And this is when a company, somebody at one of the companies has an issue, a problem, the computer won't work, whatever it is. So the process starts with the customer contact, the customer, and it's the client. So who's the process actor? Actually, it's the client who says, hey, I got a problem. What happens next? The ticket is opened. And who does it? The operations manager. And, you know, there's more detail in here. There's auto opening, whatever, but just at a high level, okay? Co customer contacts, open ticket. Decision to escalate. So decide to escalate, meaning is it something that our regular help desk can handle or do we have to escalate it to a higher uh, tech? Ops manager makes that decision. Now over here, you fill in key points. Not everything has half a key point. But for example, follow support ticket escalation rules. That is something that could make or break the process. So in other words, you know, there are established rules for how do you escalate and you want to follow them. If you don't follow them, you might be escalating something that shouldn't have been escalated. So that can make or break the process. If yes, if it has to get es escalated, then some other steps apply. So you will most likely run into these situations. There's a lot of if, you know, if this happens, then the process goes this way. It's, a, it's like a decision, a branching point. For the purposes of this, you just want to keep it simple. So here you see it's just, no, we're not going to follow that through. That can be later. For now, we want to just know the basic support ticket handling process. So we just say, okay, other steps apply. We're not going to worry about that. Assign the ticket. So the ops manager assigns the ticket to a tech, one of a number of techs. Then the tech acknowledges the tickets being worked on, acknowledging to the client, and there's a support acknowledgement email that they should use that makes the work easier. You know, why, why create a whole new email? You got it right there. Make the work easier. The, the issue is fixed. Now, of course, this can mean a lot of different things, but basically this is at this level, the tech fixes it. The key, the key thing to make or break the process is time is of the essence. We want to try to fix these within 45 minutes. Um, use the ticket support system to make it, make your life easier. Okay. Confirm the fix with the client. That's both tech and client are involved in that. And it, you could be keeping notepads. I, I'm pretty sure they're doing this even more sophisticated now, but there's nothing wrong with a notepad on your desk. It kind of keeps track of what's open. If client's not satisfied, what you do. And the last step is documenting it. So it's, it wasn't just the client. You have to actually document it for internal purposes. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a sense for the kinds of things you have to do here it's in eight steps. You could have done this in 50 steps, but you want to keep it at a higher level right now. And again, key points for this. Per None of these were going to injure the worker, but you always want to keep that in mind uh, when there's physical uh, work involved that, you know, be careful not to lift the heavy goods or whatever is involved.